Hello and welcome to Top Class, a review of all the happenings in the education sector for the second term of the 2021-2022 academic year. I am Chris Napney. We are at the Camille Henry Memorial, one of the many primary schools whose grade 6 students sat the first ever Caribbean Primary Exit Assessment or the CPEA, one of the major aspects of education management which the Chief Education Officer, Dr. Fiona Philip Meyer, will tell us about later in our program. So stay with us as we review Term 2. Minister with Responsibility for Education, Honorable Sean Edward, and Parliamentary Secretary, Senator Honorable Pauline Antoine Prosper, met with Middle and Senior Education Management of the Ministry to chart the way forward for the education sector for 2022 especially amidst the global pandemic, which delayed the reopening of school for the second term of the academic year. Agenda items discussed at the policy meeting of the ministry included the COVID-19 pandemic and its continued impact on instruction, ICT in education, the further development of TVET, CPEA exams to replace the common entrance exams, and the development of secondary education. The quality of citizens we have one, two, three decades down the road, we'll be speaking volumes, either positively or negatively, about the education that we served our children. So I believe in the holistic development of children. I believe that we cannot continue as a country to produce children who only have or see one dimension to life. There, there, there is that insatiable appetite in the country just to acquire material things. And you are, you are deemed a successful citizen based on what you've been able to accumulate over the years. The French Gateways to Global Careers, a pilot collaborative working project between Unite Caribbean, the French Embassy of St. Lucia, and the Sir Arthur Lewis Community College was launched. The aim of the project is to support the integration of TVET students across regional and international markets through higher education using a regional cooperation approach between St. Lucia and the French Caribbean territories. Unite Caribbean, the French government are now living the dream with us. Okay? They have come on board and we have created this great program, a never attempted groundbreaking initiative designed to give users French focused entrepreneurship training. Okay? This is not just a school initiative. This is countrywide. This is Martinique, this is Guadeloupe, this is St. Lucia, all coming together for this major program to boost our economy. Having noted the general decline in the numbers for the fifth wave of COVID-19 cases and maintaining continued engagement and dialogue with relevant stakeholders, the Ministry of Education made the ultimate decision to resume school for all groups and subsectors on Monday, February 7th, 2022, using the face-to-face -face modality of a whole school or alternate day approach. School guidance counselors island-wide gathered for a celebratory ecumenical service to usher in activities marking Counselors Week 2022. The commemorative service was held at the Zion SDA Church in Wavin Poisson, Paxson. Counselors Week was observed from the 7th to the 11th of February under the theme Passion, Care and Concern, School Counselors Still Moving Forward. The 2021 edition of the National Awards of Excellence came off at the National Cultural Center. The activity, which awarded students who have excelled in the areas of sports, arts and academics, and also educators for the outstanding service in education on the island, saw awards presented to top performers in special education, common entrance, CXC, CSEC, CAPE, and the top performers in the various divisions of the Sir Arthur Lewis Community College. What we are celebrating here, the achievements that is, is really an indication of your potential and what you can achieve moving forward. As a government, and at the level of the Ministry of Education, we are extremely proud of your achievements. A virtual spelling quiz undertaken by the Castries Comprehensive Secondary School ended with two first place winners. Scott Alsey and Adria Zephrin proved themselves formidable and although only one prize was allocated for the winner, 
The school sought to provide two equal prizes to the student winners. So many students found this very exciting and very educational as the words were presented to them and last season's words were presented by class of 2021. And emerging out of this activity are these two students who had a tiebreaker and even after the tiebreaker, they still continued to maintain their position as the top spellers at our school. I'm very elated to be here as a student of Castries Comprehensive Secondary School. I am one of the winners of this spelling bee and I'm proud to say that. I'm very thankful for this opportunity that was given. I'm very happy to know that there wasn't only one winner but two and it wasn't only two females or two males but one female and one male. And normally people tend to think like girls are more articulate than boys but I'm glad that Scott got the opportunity to show boys that not only girls can do what everyone else can do. An offshore medical university operating in the island south got a chance to reset after its operations was halted by the COVID-19 pandemic. Officials of the International American University, IAU, met with Minister for Education, Sean Edward, to facilitate recommencement of its programs. Economically, our institution was supporting the VFORD community a lot. Unfortunately, the pandemic came and the students had to go back and all the travel logs, the airport was not supportive of, you know, allowing the students to pass through. The travel bans literally made it very impossible to keep the students in St. Lucia for the last two years. But here, we are today to, to find a way to make it revive the, the institution and bring the students back and satisfy, bring it to reality, the dream that Viewfort is a university town. Those students, they, they, they rent from people in the South. They patronize the shops in the South. They rent vehicles. And that in itself creates a lot of economic opportunities for residents in the South. Um, so an expansion of their, their program is something that we would welcome. Um, the other thing that I must mention of is that quite apart from opening up to, to offshore medical schools and, and, and providers of, of higher education in this country, we, we have done our due diligence and we went to ensure that whatever is taught in St. Lucia, whatever operations are set up in St. Lucia, um, are in keeping with the standards that we would have set for ourselves and, and, and those operations are also in keeping with the international standards that we subscribe to as a country. Three school construction projects being undertaken by the Education Quality Improvement Project, EQUIP, were said to be going smoothly and anticipated to be completed on schedule. The Laguerre Primary School is being rebuilt, while both the Vidbutai Primary and the Gordon and Walcott Memorial Methodist are each receiving a new wing. Construction of the three sites commenced in June of 2021 under the Education Quality Improvement Project, EQUIP, at a total cost of 24 million EC dollars through funding from the government of St. Lucia and the Caribbean Development Bank, the CDB. You're watching Top Class. There is just so much happening in the backgrounds in education that you are not so quite aware of. And I have with me Dr. Fiona Philip Meyer, who is the Chief Education Officer, who is going to give us some insight into how the, the management and, uh, of instruction and, of course, the curriculum the creation and all what's happening in the background, she can give us an insight into that. So welcome to Top Class. Thank you. Thank you so very much, Mr. Satney. Thanks for having me. Tell us a little about... Um, your role as a chief education officer and of course how it fits in with the the whole ambit of uh, um, education the education sector and how the management of education happens f throughout the island as uh, with regard to the various districts well first of all i'm very pleased and privileged to sit in the capacity of chief education officer this is the individual as per the education act who is legally responsible for the proper and effective management of the education sector and reports directly to the Minister for Education. I am ever so grateful that I have a team of eight education officers throughout the island of St. Lucia, districts one to eight, and a deputy chief responsible for instruction that we work very, very closely with 
to ensure that there's proper management. Additionally, we have our heads of departments who are directly responsible for matters impacting schools. For example, our special education unit, our guidance and counseling team, our school feeding program, our early childhood sector, our CAMDU teams. These are all individuals, our TIVET unit, who form part of this wider cross-section of individuals who work towards an effective management of our system. One of the individuals we have is that of our attendance officer. He is the lone the lone individual in that sector, and we'd really hope to see an improvement in that area as we work as well alongside individuals such as, such as our health and safety officer. So this entire group of individuals are responsible for the effective management of schools, and we work very closely with principals, with administrators, with support staff, with teachers more importantly, and parents as well as students to hopefully enhance our education system. For me, it is small attainable goals, keeping in mind the broader vision that we have for the education sector, which is aligned with the OECS vision of having every child succeeding. Mm -hmm. we, we've been trying over many years to, to modernize the education sector, modernize the curriculum, modernize how instruction is delivered. Your view on the way forward as we uh, prepare for the dig digital age and transforming the education system to one that, uh, that, that resembles uh, what is happening across the, 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 not just the region, but the world? Well, for me, I don't think we're at the preparation stage anymore. I think we've long passed the preparation stage. A digital, an innovative, a creative, an ICT-driven, a data-driven school system has existed the last 20 years. We do have some catching up to do, but I am hoping and praying because of the training that has already happened, the continuous zeal for that improvement to happen, that we can be well on our way to bring our students up to par with international standards. We didn't get much of a choice with COVID. The pandemic really thrust us into things that we had been working with for years. The Google Classrooms were introduced back in, say, 2010 in certain schools. So it is for us to appreciate that our students in St. Lucia are no different to any child anywhere in the world. We are developing in terms of digitalization in terms of ICT integration at the same pace. What's happening in terms of Google Classrooms in St. Lucia is what's happening at international schools all over the world. So it is for us to say that we are going to make a conscious effort to train, to retrain, to upskill, to retool, to encourage, to motivate, because some people are at different stages of appreciating that the system of what we knew and we, we were taught in no longer exists. It is the fact that our students are not necessarily only looking to their teachers for information and knowledge. They're checking it out immediately. While the teacher is speaking, they can be Googling exactly what. They can be looking at search engines to find out. So it is for us to keep abreast us about that and to say it is not a limitation. It shouldn't be a challenge. It shouldn't be a disadvantage. It should be one that we say, let us embrace it. But our teachers are strong enough to facilitate that learning, to offer students opportunities to say, yes, you can find that information, but what are your sources? How do you look at plagiarism? How do you give you know, credence to who the authors are? How do you balance that information that you find? How do you use that information effectively? So our teachers are more and more facilitators of learning as they themselves ensure that they remain lifelong learners because we are learning alongside the students and we must embrace it. We really don't have much choice and if we do not embrace it, we will be left behind. You're watching Top Class. Well, we're happy to be conversing with the Chief Education Officer, that is Dr. Fiona Philip Meyer, on the work in the education sector. But for now, let's get back to top class. The Chamber of Commerce, through its partners, handed over donation checks to the Student Welfare Program of the Ministry of Education. The Student Welfare Program is a section of the ministry responsible for the school feeding program and the Yelly Book Drive. 
Corporate entities involved included Lucilec, Caribbean Metals Limited, J. Bagas, and Bank of St. Lucia. Mount St. Lucians stand to receive scholarships from the Republic of China, Taiwan, after its embassy in St. Lucia conducted a scholarship briefing for persons interested in studying in Taiwan. Taiwanese and St. Lucians are the same. We all believe that education brings forth tremendous opportunities. And I believe that study in Taiwan, a country ranked 12th, at the Global Competitiveness Report by World Economic Forum and force on innovative capability in the IMF World Competitiveness Report will be a transformative and rewarding journey for all of you. Meantime, a total of 32 65-inch interactive educational screens were handed over to 11 secondary schools and the 10 primary schools as part of the ICT in Education Smart Classroom Project funded by the Republic of China, Taiwan. As part of this initiative, the Grand Rivier Secondary School received a new addition to its school's resource room. St. Lucia joined its regional and international counterparts in the observance of International Francophonie Day on Sunday, March 20, 2022, under the theme, The Francophonie of the Future, to put the spotlight on the organization's support for the youth and its aspirations, especially in the fields of entrepreneurship, digital technology, and the environment. The day commemorates the ability of the French language and the culture to bring people together and establish spaces of solidarity and mutual understanding. In order to highlight the important role of the youth in national development, the Office of the National Correspondent for the Francophonie within the National Commission for UNESCO, along with the National Youth Council, held a youth leadership workshop at the Bay Gardens Resort. I must say that the knowledge shared here will definitely go a long way and it will assist our district youth and sports councils in reaching our young people and catering to their needs. What also stuck with me was the GIS formation and having mentioned that I reflected on the relationships that they also have in life in that they practice social monogamy, and that is lifelong partnership. You're watching Top Class. The Sir Arthur Lewis Community College recognized and honored the work of Dr. Kato Lorenzen, a pioneer in the field of regenerative engineering with St. Lucian Roots at the ceremony held at the college. Dr. Lorenzen, who was honored locally with the National Medal of Honor Gold, at the Investiture Ceremony for Independence Celebrations, signed a Memorandum of Understanding with the College on behalf of the University of Connecticut, where he is based, to foster functional cooperation between the two institutions. It is something that is, um, I believe, is a, one of the highlights of my life and my career. As you know, I've been around the world and I've met many presidents, premiers, and, and, and premiers and had a number of awards. This marks, this is an award that is very near to me because it comes from my home and my homeland. So. But receiving the Medal of Honor is also an opportunity. It's an opportunity for me to rededicate to those things that I've spoken about in terms of you know, working with the uh, the nation of St. Lucia. The cabinet of ministers came out in their numbers in support of an OECS program to make e-learning devices available to primary school students on the island. Prime Minister Honorable Philip J. Pierre once again pledged his government's commitment to providing electronic devices to every child on the island to aid their digital education development and to provide them with a platform to engage in online study whenever it becomes necessary. The devices provided will specifically go to students at the primary level of low socioeconomic homes without access to such a device. The philosophy that says that there must be equal opportunity for all individuals, every child, in spite of where they are born or where, or where they live, or where their parents come from, or the color of their skin, should have equal opportunity for education in the country of his birth. Parliamentary Secretary, Senator Honorable Pauline Antoine Prosper, is sure the OECS Commission's input 
will help provide 21st century education to students even before they enter secondary school. As we speak, the ministry is also receiving another 3,800 Chromebooks procured using government resources. This will be made available to students at the secondary school level. In the process of integrating technology in education, we must ensure that the three fundamental 21st century literacy skills are achieved. Information literacy, media literacy, and technology literacy. The Caribbean Primary Exit Assessment, CPEA examinations, was launched in St. Lucia with much fanfare as the Ministry of Education raised the awareness through the use of a mascot. The CPEA, which is administered by CXC, consists of an internal and an external component. The CPEA comprises of four core areas including mathematics, social studies, language, and science. It replaces the common entrance exam. I remain steadfast in knowing that our assessments must redound to something so much more positive for all of our children. Not some, not the elite, not the top brass, but all of our children do have that opportunity to make a difference. A call was sounded for learners from the SKY program offered by the National Enrichment and Learning Unit, NELU, to complete assessment as scores of learners receive their CVQ Level 1 certificates. You're watching Top Class as we continue our conversation with the Chief Education Officer, Dr. Fiona Philip Meyer. We were speaking earlier about um, the, the makeup of, of your team, but talk to us about how you what you have learned from the episode over the last couple of years dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic? An interesting, an interesting period for us, a difficult period at times, a period that pushed us and also one that allowed us to really reflect upon our systems and how best we serve our nation's children in particular, while ensuring that the support teams, the administrative teams, the teaching teams also found their place and were given due consideration. The pandemic has impacted us in so many ways that I fear years later we would not have discovered everything that has happened. I have often spoken, spoken about the way it's impacted our students because I think that we have not necessarily looked into with various surveys, with various um, initiatives, how our children have felt during this period. We've not necessarily had conversations with them. We don't have data to speak to how they're faring during this time. Similarly, our staff, our teachers, those who've loved, who's lost, those who have lost um, loved ones, mm -hmm. those who've been impacted, their families have been impacted, juggling, teaching, you know, while at the same time caring for children our wider society, how our frontline workers were impacted. So there are so many facets to this, but what I really appreciate is that we did come together. We didn't have much of a choice, but we could have fought it to and nail. What we saw, we saw support staff at the gates helping children. We saw janitors taking greater responsibility for keeping the place safe. We saw administrators coming up with creative ways and sharing those in terms of being consistent in how we deliver on hygienic practices, while at the same time working with staff to make sure that instruction continued. We saw flexibility where some of our teachers said, well, we know that many of the, the individuals are at work. How can we best support? We saw classes happening in the evening. So there's been a lot that has happened. I must speak to the wellness aspect, the mental wellness of our students, our teachers. And I would say we need to be kind to each other. It is a reality that pandemics, issues of, of trauma impact us emotionally. And so we have to continue to appreciate that all of us 
our emotions are part of this. But it speaks to our own emotional intelligence as to how we deal with situations, where we can step back and say, gosh, we know that it is not meant personally. You know, we know that we have to use various strategies to basically take a breather and be kind to each other because our children were suffering, our wider community was suffering, our teachers were impacted. And so we have a great responsibility, all of us, not one, all of us, to just be kind to each other, to just appreciate that we may be going through something, but other people are going through other things as well. So for me, it is really about this collective moving forward and this taking on a responsibility to say, how best can we move ahead of, of this together um, as a unit, mm -hmm. but also appreciating that we're all in this together. Um, finally, um, briefly, if you could um, try to allay the fears of the parents out there as to the, the systems put in place to ensure that their, their children, their wards, are well taken care of, the entire um, education ambit, the, the whole aspect of instruction, and of course, all those systems put in place to ensure that um, everything runs smoothly. How could you allay the fears of parents? Well, I would firstly ask our parents to take greater responsibility as they have, and they will have to continue to take that great responsibility together with us. So it is about school, home, and the wider community together with the student moving forward. I can speak to systems that are recognized OECS-wide and that are comparable to international standards in terms of an education sector strategy plan that has been vetted, that has been enhanced, that we review to ensure that when we have various scenarios that impact our children, there is data, there is a plan to deal with them. We are constantly collecting data and we do that. There is information as to student absenteeism, you know, issues that we have at our schools, numbers of students being impacted with COVID, age ranges. We are constantly looking at this. Additionally, the Ministry of Education has supported in terms of and alongside NGOs as well, such as UNICEF, OECS, CARICOM, you know, other private entities, other private community groups in terms of putting in the necessary resources at the schools. We're very pleased that some of our schools have up to, you know, some of our large schools have up to 10 hand washing stations, you know. So, so many people have come together to help us in that regard. And so it is to say, let us continue to be vigilant. We cannot let our guards down. We cannot say, oh, we're fine and nothing is going to happen. Because when it does happen, then we want to ensure who's taking responsibility for it. It is all of our responsibility. But in terms of the processes, in terms of the alignment of policies, in terms of the data-driven decision making, this is what we're about. We do not speak to reopening or closure of schools without data. We do appreciate, however, that there are other entities and other groupings that will help make those decisions, in particular the Ministry of Health, as well as the Cabinet of Ministers and the Government of St. Lucia. But in our capacity, in terms of what we do on the ground, we are always reflective upon practice because our aim is to ensure our children have the best that they possibly can have and also a sustained, a consistent period of education. It is not only about instruction. That's not what it is about. It is about ensuring that we feel safe. Everybody feels safe within our school walls, but also about the social and emotional well-being, the nutritional well-being of our children, the healthy habits we want to continue to have, the interaction that they so need to ensure that the social ills that confront them do not continuously um, be an impediment to their development, which if we do not take care of now, we will see the impact five, 10 years from now. So it is not only about instruction, it is about the holistic well-being of all of our staff, students, as well as the wider community. 
Dr. Maya, thank you so much for joining us on Top Class. It was certainly a pleasure. You're watching Top Class as we get back to the happenings in education for the second term of the academic year 2021-2022. Training for cooks within the Ministry of Education school feeding program was said to be going smoothly. Funded by the Food and Agriculture Organization, FAO, the training will help enhance the preparation and presentation of meals to students under the program. The tasting sessions performed by school children themselves are drawing honest opinions which will be used to facilitate adjustment to meals. It was exquisite, but... The squash um, combination, mm -hmm. I, as well, <laughs> it, it was not appealing to me. The squash? I did not enjoy it because, okay. in my words, it, it was bitter mm -hmm. and it didn't have much flavor as I expected it to. Mm -hmm. But everything else was phenomenal, Good. fantastic. What we've noticed is that a lot of our children are not getting a healthy diet is because parents are not educated. Even even some of our cooks, they're not, they're not too sure about a, um, education in nutrition. So therefore, we want to make that holistic. So we're also having um, the parents, um, we're having a, a part where the parents will be educated on how to cook for the children. Even the teachers will be included in that so that everybody are on the same page. We're all singing from the same hymn book so we know that education, um, nutrition means that. And we also will educate educate people on the um, nutrition policy for St. Lucia. St. Lucia, with funding from UNESCO, is one step closer to fully integrating the Creole language into the education system as education officials and stakeholders meet to discuss and assess the language education policy and plan. Today's consultation forms part of a broader process which seeks to take the national language policy from policy stage to implementation phase. The project was conceptualized by the Language Department of CAMDU, Ministry of Education, and was funded by UNESCO under its participation program 2020-2021 call. Specifically, the project addresses a very important issue of the status of the Creole language within the education system. The key objective being the, the development of an imp implementation plan which would essentially transform policy into action, paper into practice. The work of the late Hunter J. Faswa was celebrated as St. Lucia opened National Library Week at a ceremony held at the Central Library under the theme, Connect with Your Library. National Library Week is observed annually in the first week of April and celebrates the contributions of libraries and library workers in St. Lucia. Libraries and the role librarians play in the dissemination of information to our society. As libraries are known to connect with the communities in which they serve, establishing great bonds. As we re-establish visibility in a world where the advent of technology has obliterated the traditional library, let me inform you the modern library is designed to embrace technology. The Beanfield Comprehensive Secondary School has been named the winner of a science snapshot competition put on recently by the Curriculum and Materials Development Unit, CAMDU. The science snapshot competition, also known as the Four Stamp Competition, is being used by CAMDU as an avenue to nurture the interest among students in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, or STEM, throughout the education sector. I am sure that through this competition, all winners here, as well as the teachers and others who participated, that this spark has been lit, and that we will start a renewed interest in STEM among all our schools. We ask that you continue to support our activities as we continue to bring STEM to each and every household in St. Lucia. The overall winner for the inaugural contest is Prashanti Rathod of the Beanfield Comprehensive Secondary School, who also won the secondary category. First of all, I would like to thank my family and my school, especially one of my teachers who encouraged me. I would also like to congratulate all the participants who took part in the competition. The person illustrated in the fourth stamp is a cancer cell biologist, Whitney, Whitney Henry.
She is a St. Lucia and has conducted researches on ovarian cancer, chemo resistance, and cancer biology. The Ministry of Education has partnered with the St. Lucia Social Development Fund, SSDF, in collaboration with the Center for Adolescent Renewal and Education Care to target young males who have fallen through the cracks in the education system to provide them with specialized training and care through a pilot project entitled Post-Primary Alternative Pathway. So we have investigated the level of, of intelligence, speech and language, academic performances um, such as reading abilities, ability to do mathematics. There is a comprehensive report available on each of these students. We know exactly the levels of functioning that they have and that gives us information to suggest what is possible for them going forward. And the, the assessment report that we have will be made available to the learning institution that they will be going on to so that the, the teacher who will be working with them, who by the way is a, a highly trained special education specialist who will be giving targeted assistance and guidance to them so that they can experience the maximum chance. Not only will they be given the opportunity to develop themselves, in the junior life program because that's what they're going to be engaged in first but they will also be given the opportunity to develop themselves in an income bearing skill and so for us it is a, a, a real exciting beginning the royal highness prince and princess edward earl and countess of wessex ended the final day of their royal visit to saint lucia with a visit to schools the week-long visit to St. Lucia ended the tour of the Caribbean to mark the Queen's Platinum Jubilee. Well, coming to you from the Camille Henry Memorial School, that's where we come to the end of Top Class as we reviewed the happenings in the education sector for the second term of the 2021-2022 academic year. On behalf of the entire production team of the Communications Unit and the management and staff of the Ministry of Education, I am Chris Sackney. Until next time, class dismissed.